Thinking aloud. Conversations on the leading edge of knowledge and discovery with psychologist Jeffrey Mishlove. Hello and welcome. I'm Jeffrey Mishlove. We'll be exploring integral education today, and my guest is Professor Thomas Brophy, who is an astrophysicist. He is also president of the California Institute of Human Science. He is the author of several books, including The Mechanism Demands a Mysticism, Explorations of Spirit, Matter, and Physics. In addition, he has written The Origin Map, a prehistoric megalithic map of the universe, and two books co-authored with Robert Bouval. One is called Black Genesis, the Prehistoric Origins of Ancient Egypt, as well as Imhotep the African, the Architect of the Cosmos. Welcome again, Thomas. Thank you. My pleasure to be here again. It's a pleasure to be with you, and thank you for coming to Albuquerque. I know that as the president of a small college, integral education is central to the work that you do, so I'm very happy to have have this discussion. But a lot of people, when they hear the word integral, especially as it relates to education, I think it's more understood as a mathematical function than, than as a feature of education. What just do you mean by that? In integral education, we mean integrative or holistic education. Integral, integrative education is mind, body, spirit inclusive. It's inclusive of exterior world and interior world or exteriority, uh, physical aspect of reality and interiority, consciousness aspect of reality and also inclusive of individual aspect and uh, social collective aspect of being. Mm -hmm. And it's more than just integral as education. It's more than just being inclusive of all these aspects of reality. It's incorporating uh, them into reality, uh, into education, including uh, development, uh, human development, and uh, cultural development for, as the founder of my institute would put it, for the uh, development of a sustainable global society. Now, that founder is Dr. Hiroshi Motoyama, about whom we've done a previous interview, and I'm going to link to that. If viewers are interested, uh, there's a hot link in the upper right-hand corner of the screen that'll take them uh, if if they'd like to see that prior interview, which might be a good introduction to our topic today, because in a way, Motoyama exemplified uh, the concept of integral education. Yes, I think so, really. And... Uh, he developed, he uh, created eight principles for the operation of CHS as an institute that uh, I argue I wrote a little paper that can be seen as an uh, integral paradigm of their own, uh, developed independently by Motoyama on a par with other integral paradigms like uh, uh, the Ken Wilber's integral paradigm and... Uh, uh, Roy Bascar, the British philosopher's in integrative approach to meta-reality, meta and Sri Aurobindo. Uh, so I wrote another little paper connecting uh, the roots of Motoyama's development of Motoyama philosophy and integral his integral approach to education to uh, uh, Aurobindo's integral approach to education and integral yoga. Um, the Sivananda yoga tradition in India that was uh, connected with Aurobindo and Aurobindo's integral philosophy. That's where the term uh, integral philosophy came from was mm -hmm. Aurobindo's use. Sri Aurobindo. Yeah. Well, now, Sri Aurobindo was uh, inspired Haridas Chowdhury, who is really the founder of the California Institute of Integral Studies up in San Francisco. Uh, so, so, your organization, the California Institute of Human Sciences, in, in some ways, parallel. CIIS uh, was founded earlier, and in a sense, California Institute of Integral Studies uh, is sort of the first uh, major integral 
education, higher education institute in the U.S., and it was uh, inspired largely by Sri Aurobindo's uh, integral philosophy. A uh, unique uh, difference for that CIHS brings is more emphasis on the scientific aspect. It seems to me that the idea of integral education is, isn't really new. One, one could find it, I should think, in Plato's Academy even. Well, that's right. Yes, uh, Plato's uh, three great value spheres, the true, the good, and the beautiful, uh, map into the, the value spheres that I, that I uh, address, the exteriority, the true, the interiority uh, aspect of, of being good and the beautiful, and the collective and the uh, individual. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, so, yes. And so, this has been uh, with us for a long time, and that's, that's a West, an early uh, ancient Western embodiment, uh, Plato's Academy. There was also the uh, ancient uh, Eastern uh, religious and spiritual traditions that w could also be seen as integrative, integral. Uh, that's sort of what Sri Aurobindo comes out of. In uh, Aurobindo's uh, uh, term, you can kind of terms you can kind of simplify uh, into categories of education uh, and integral edu education of the physical, education of the vital, education of the mental, education of the psychic, and education of the spirit. Mm -hmm. And in Motoyama's principles, there's a lot of uh, similarity in his uh, emphases and as well as for the purpose of a betterment of uh, humanity in the global society is uh, an addition that you see in uh, Motoyama's articulation of his principles. These days, it seems as if higher education has become over-specialized. I've heard one scholar say it's gotten to the point where we know more and more and more about less and less and less. Higher education has become very highly specialized and, and uh, fields uh, of, of expertise have become ex extremely specialized and there's there are good thing get good things to becoming a specialized expert because you can really drill down uh into a field and become expert on some very specific things on the other hand so one of the other features of integral education is uh an appreciation for transdisciplinarity uh transdisciplinary development of of uh, ideas and uh, education that transdisciplinary goes beyond a single discipline and uh, incorporates uh, all disciplines all disciplines perspectives from all disciplines Transdis transdisciplinary <laughs> appreciates that there are aspects of growth and uh, science and education that transcend disciplines. Mm -hmm. Now, in my case, which is very unique, I got an interdisciplinary doctoral degree at uh, Berkeley. Uh, it was so controversial that after I uh, graduated, they abolished uh, the interdisciplinary PhD program completely for decades. It's been restored now, but there's been, I think, in academia, um, a tendency to discourage students from doing interdisciplinary work. I think I think traditionally there has been that, uh, but I understand that uh, recently there is a, a growing reappreciation of interdisciplinary, mm -hmm. and I think that's a good thing. And we th in the integral education community think uh, it's really the wave of the future that this is coming back in. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's connected with the um, you know the rise of the internet age and. Uh, the, the techno technology age in that uh, uh, we, we now have expert system computers that mm -hmm. uh, are surpassing humans in, in many ways as, as uh, hyper-specialized experts. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's another reason for us uh, to uh, develop our value as humans who can transcend uh, disciplines and work uh, uh, multi-perspectively mm -hmm. uh, and uh, bring together uh, uh, elements of specializations.
mm-hmm. for uh, for uh, for development. Well, I get. I'm under the impression that in your program and in other programs that are similar, there. I, I'm going to guess that there are probably a dozen small universities and colleges here in the United States that really do take an integral approach. It's uh, yes, there, there are departments and uh, uh, institutes within uh, sections within other institutes uh, and universities that are taking integral approaches, especially to certain uh, certain fields like uh, integrative uh, medicine. I understand is uh, a by new board certification, and there are integrative health departments uh, that uh, and there's there's a a center for uh, Consciousness and Integrative Studies at the uh, University of Michigan, uh, and um, there are there are these centers. But as far as a a whole institute, even though we're very small, very small institute, uh, a whole institute dedicated to holistic integral education, really CHS is maybe a little bit unique in that way. Mm-hmm. I presume that you more or less expect that your students are going to be engaged in some sort of inner work in addition to their uh, scholastic studies. So formally in the program, we have a, a spiritual education component. So there are various a set of courses that fill, fulfill that component. And um, many of our courses uh, bring in uh, the bring in uh, uh, inner work of various types. So as an institute, we're not uh, stuck on. We're not. We're not. Uh, emphasizing only one particular mm-hmm. type of inner work, but inner work generally as uh, important for the the uh, education of the uh, interior aspect, the consciousness mm-hmm. aspect of being. Uh, is, well, what is what are some of the uh, courses, for example, in, on the spiritual side? We have a course in pranic healing, mm-hmm. and uh, a course in. Um, uh, Conscious death and dying. We have uh, an active Zen meditation group. That's not a course. It's just mm-hmm. a co-curricular activity. Mm-hmm. And uh, mm-hmm. we have a course on uh, uh, psychology of the chakras. Uh, a course on Motoyama philosophy. Mm-hmm. Several courses. Like You're not wedded to a particular ideology. Like I, I know some religions have, in the, historically have founded colleges for training uh, the ministers and the priests of, of that particular religion. That's not what this is about. The founder of CIHS, uh, he was the head priest, priest of a religious organization based in Japan, uh, and they funded uh, largely the initial startup of CIHS as an institute, uh, but uh, as an institute and uh, with the blessings of the uh, religious organization, uh, we are wedded uh, to uh, academic freedom and the regional accreditation process, which uh, sort of ensures uh, academic freedom. And philosophically, as an educational institute, we are uh, integrative, integral based. So we wouldn't be uh, focused on any one religion or any one spiritual tradition. So much education in, in the United States today, I think, is aimed at getting people into the workplace. In fact, I've even heard uh, uh, congressmen say, you know, we don't need liberal arts education anymore. We need to train STEM, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Uh, so the people can get good jobs and, uh, they should, they should just from high school get some technical training and then, uh, get into the workplace, uh, in, in, entirely. That's, that seems to be very different than the integral approach. Yes, except that, uh, one of the key words of integral is <clears throat> inclusive. STEM education is wonderful and important. Uh, it's just the integral approach, integral education approach, uh, also values more. Mm-hmm. The uh, transdisciplinarity and the multi-perspectivalism together with uh, a uh, STEM education. Now you had a conventional education. Yes, physics, uh-huh. uh, University of Colorado. Mm-hmm. And, uh, uh, yeah, conventional. Uh, you had a, a conventional physics uh, education in astrophysics, uh, as I recall. And, and then you got a job working for NASA. Yes. Well, while I was, I was completing my PhD, uh, I was, uh, I was with a laboratory that had an instrument on board the NASA Voyager spacecraft. Mm-hmm. 
So at some point you sort of jump ship. If if you you could you could look at it that way, but you could also look at it as reconnecting with my early interest in uh, both sides of both aspects of reality, both the mm -hmm. science of physics and uh, 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 spiritual traditions, m mystical traditions, and East and religious uh, practices. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, so I was always interested in both. Uh, mm -hmm. So. Uh, Maybe you could say it was uh, it, it was bringing the ships together rather than okay. jumping out of one of them. <laughs> okay. So when when people uh, matriculate from your university, they they might get a bachelor's degree, a master's, or a PhD. What is, what is the job market like for people with that kind of a background? We have masters and PhD programs and a and a bachelor's completion program, mm -hmm. not a full bachelor's program. It it does depend on the program. We we do have a clinical psychology track program that fulfills the requirements to lead to licensure, uh, California state licensure uh, in clinical psychology. So there is in that one program there's a, a clear uh, career track. Yeah. Uh, in the other programs, uh, our students do need to be more entrepreneurial. You know, they, they're not really vocational track programs, but many many. Uh, even in standard universities, many graduate degrees aren't really either. Yeah. Uh, uh, so, and and many of our students uh, come to CHS uh, after some experience or developing a career of some sort already as well, and their their education is enhancing and advancing what they're already doing. Yeah, I do recall years and years ago. Um, I think it was. Emerson College in England, which was a, a college founded by Rudolf Steiner, mm. or at least based on his teachings, uh, the Austrian mystic and philosopher. And uh, I heard one of the uh, founders or, or leaders of that college saying something to the effect that we're not educating people to fill slots in the job market. We are educating people to create jobs. That's a good way to look at it, too. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. So entrepreneurial, innovative. Uh, so as innovative integral education, uh, many of our graduates become innovative in what they do. Mm -hmm. And innovation uh, creates jobs. Because you're such a small school, the numbers of, of students right now are in the dozens, not in the hundreds. Uh, you're looking for people who uh, have already know that this is what they want. An integrative approach, an integral approach, is what they've been looking for. Mm -hmm. um, so we are, in that sense, we're filling a niche that uh, in the higher education market that yeah. uh, is is wanted. Now, some students uh, come to an educational uh, institution. They've had a lot of life experience, and they want to know: Can I take my life experience, which is integral because it's my life? my whole life, and somehow get a degree for what I've already done in my life. I'm, I'm guessing that's not what you have in mind. No, no. We, we have uh, uh, specific degree requirements, a uh, certain number of units of classes that you have to take, and, and uh, a, a master's thesis for the master's program, a doctoral dissertation for the doctoral dissertation program. Uh, together with the coursework units, uh, we, we can only transfer in a, a certain number of courses of, of course units and that usually only from uh, courses taken at uh, other accredited universities. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we don't live, give life experience credit. What was Motoyama's intention actually in founding this school? Was, was he trying to cultivate a particular type of individual to face the particular challenges of, uh, that he saw in the present era? He was, uh, Wanting to uh, meet the needs to develop a uh, sustainable, peaceful global society. And he saw that as uh, educating individuals uh, in a way that develops them to function in mm -hmm. the global society in a way that will work towards 
uh, sustainability. When I was young, I, I think I mentioned to you briefly, I had the privilege of living with Arthur Young at the Institute for the Study of Consciousness in Berkeley. I was invited to move in to the Institute, and Arthur's wife, Ruth Young, had founded an institution called the International Peace Academy, and, and that really was their goal. They found young students, uh, and also people, diplomats, who were just starting their career in the diplomatic corps, and they'd offer courses for them in how to negotiate for peace, specifically, as opposed to how to negotiate for the advantage of, of your country. Our students who go through uh, integral education and courses in integral studies, mm -hmm. uh, they do uh, connect with tools like that mm -hmm. to allow you to operate in a world. Part of what go, goes along with the um, transperspectival or multi-perspectival aspect of integral education is the ability to, capacity to function uh, transperspectively. In that way, you can connect with multiple perspectives and uh, bring, uh, bring fields and people together in a way that uh, in, in, a, in a more powerful way than if you're not uh, schooled in those areas. Perspectival, that's it. <laughs> uh, yeah, so transperspectival is uh, operating on, on many and not privileging only one perspective, not privileging mm -hmm. only my perspective, being aware of and, and able to work with and appreciate multiple perspectives. I know that there are certain disciplines, physics, I think, being one of them, where uh, the uh, adherents to that discipline more or less believe that they are approaching reality from a privileged perspective. I've <laughs> certainly talked to physicists who feel that, you, you know, the, the bedrock of existence are these particles <laughs> that, they, that they study. That's the foundation of everything. That gives them some privilege, not to mention that they can build weapons. Yes, and it can be both and. In other words, uh, in a sense, uh, you can study particle physics and uh, there is a reality to what, what part of particle physics study. Mm -hmm. it's, it's just not the, the entire reality of all existence. There's, mm -hmm. there's a, a quiet revolution going on in philosophy of science and it is closely connected with the foundations of physics uh, that me, that in, involves a, a increasing appreciation for the consciousness aspect of reality mm -hmm. and, and that in order to have a, a whole model of all of reality, we, we are going to need to uh, bring into a scientific understanding of some sort that there is a consciousness aspect of reality as well as the material particle physics yeah. aspect. Now, I've interviewed um, a, an interesting philosopher many times, Stephen Browdy, who maintains that there is no such thing as a privileged perspective at all, that all perspectives are equal, that a, an, an interior designer who walks into a room and sees the furniture, is, is uh, that perspective is just as valid as the, that of the physicist who notices or uh, uh, intuits the atoms and the molecules that make up the room. Yes, that's uh, that's the multi-perspectival aspect, and mm -hmm. and there's also transperspectival approaches that can reintroduce uh, uh, values. So maybe uh, maybe all perspectives exist, and and all perspectives. Uh, 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 have equal weight in some ways, but there's also, uh, the ability to, uh, recognize, uh, some things that have value too. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I know different people put value on, uh, on, on different things, but there are certainly various traditions that suggest that, uh, the highest value of all is, um, what's sometimes called the perennial philosophy, the, the idea that we're all interconnected, for example. I consider that as included in an integral, integrative education approach. Mm -hmm. uh, perhaps in a, more, uh, in a more modern way that also reconnects with, with science in a newly integrative way, not just uh, sort of picking a particular version of the ancient perennial philosophy, but really uh, reintegrating 
perennial philosophy with uh, s modern science in a new way for the modern new world. Dr. Thomas Brophy, once again, a very enlightening discussion, and it's exciting that, uh, in, in a way, I see you on the frontier of education, and I set up this channel for the very purpose of, of giving people a new way to think about parapsychology as a modern scientific discipline, but with ancient roots. I think your show is on the frontier of integral education, too. Well, I'd like to think so, so I'm very happy to have this discussion with you, and uh, I hope that students who who are really want to go deeper than just watching videos and maybe want to get an educational credential will take a look at your school, the California Institute of Human Science. Yes, thank you. My pleasure. Thank you for coming to Albuquerque and being with me. And my pleasure. And thank you for being with us. Thank you.